start. Yes. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. This is Dr. Kondan Nageshwar, the director of OUCAP, Usman University, as part of the OUCAP lecture series. Today we are going to have the lecture number 16, titled Contemporary Literary Art of Class Fiction by an eminent academician, Professor Kariko Chandra Dugar. Sir is well known in the academic skills across the country and he was a regular reader and the best prize awardee of former ASRC. And Professor Paritosh Dugar has a close association with our center for many years, for decades together. So was former principal, worked as the, the head, government PG college, Udaipur, that is Rajasthan. Sir is going to talk on the contemporary literary art of flash fiction. It is a variety topic of all other topics of the previous lectures. Class fiction is generally defined as a story of extreme bravery. It was formed in the 20th century to include stories up to 750 words. It has been labeled as micro fiction, sudden fiction, postcard fiction, minute fiction, drabbles, bites, pistlet, nano fiction, and so on. Almost all the literature teachers and students they know about fiction, but today's topic is something different from general fiction. Professor Dugar is going to look at, going to project his ideas and thoughts in the different way, looking at the contemporary literature, special connection with the art of flash fiction. I'm sure Professor Dugar sir is going to share his thoughts in a different way, he has almost the experience of 40 years at various government colleges of Rajasthan. And he's an expert in different areas like mysticism, rhetoric, English language, and creative writing. He has trained masters, students as the trainers in the state of Rajasthan. And we feel privileged to associate with him. Professor Dugar is a recipient of Olive Riddick Prize. Usually we give that prize in the olden days for the best thesis from our former ASRC. He spent years together. He attended many lectures. And he was the plenary speaker for many national and international conferences as a resource person, as a keynote speaker, as a plenary speaker, not only in India, but also different countries like Nepal, Thailand, and the Philippines. And Sir has authored several books and published quality research papers in the prestigious national and international journals. 
and he has contributed short stories and articles the times of india the and in the prestigious indian english daily and professor kugar has been subject expert at rajasthan public service commission which is the prestigious body keeping the hands of the government sector and he was the writer the editor for many textbooks in the state of rajasthan and also at the central level after his retirement as the principal of pg college rajasthan professor dugar worked as the managing editor for four research journals published by the pacific university of udaipur he is an internationally published writer of flash fiction and winner of many prizes especially international flash fiction writing competition so that i feel privileged to introduce today's speaker professor paritosh chandra duggar thank you very much sir for accepting our invitation to deliver your valuable thoughts as part of our lecture series now may I invite professor paritosh duggar sir to deliver his talk thank you so much uh, konda sir for delivering uh, an epidictic discourse on me <laughs> it was a very extended uh, kind of uh, introduction i did not deserve it uh, well i would like to thank uh, first of all uh, the oucip and especially its director dr konda nageshwar rao for giving me the opportunity to talk to you on flash fiction i am also very thankful to former oucip director professor karunakar for always encouraging me to write flash fiction stories he i have shared a lot many of my flash fiction stories with him and his appreciation always inspired me i thank him so much for his encouragement i am going to talk to you on the contemporary literary art of flash fiction as dr konda pointed out flash fiction is a is a story of extreme brevity i will i will i will come to it in my talk a few days ago uh, while googling for some relevant critical literature on flash fiction i came across an article entitled wounds and words a lexical and syntactic analysis of cassocotts there are other things besides brightness and light by veronica terrayo a professor of english from the philippines in his insightful article tarayo conducts a stylistic analysis of a flash fiction story by ian rosales cascot who is a celebrated filipino flash fiction writer what actually amused me or rather i should say made me wonder was that the story consisted of only 496 words where its 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 analysis went beyond 8500 words running almost over 10 pages now my hours long impatient search on the internet without any significant success and my reading of terrayo's study led me to infer two things number 1 flash fiction as a literary genre has not hitherto received considerable academic consideration attention despite its growing global popularity and number 2 a flash fiction story or a short short story can have such a literary potential as to invite a serious study such as exemplified by by terrayo's analysis 
Now, being a fresh fiction writer myself, I felt impelled by these inferences to come up with a discourse on flash fiction with aims to vindicate flash fiction as contemporary literary art by highlighting and illuminating its literary features through examples from contemporary writers and to counter any attempt to stigmatize flash fiction as a work too brief to have any beauty or to move the soul of the reader. This may be treated as my humble attempt to contribute to the existing body of literature on flash fiction, on the genre, and to stimulate the interest of my academic fraternity in flash fiction and its use as a pedagogical tool for teaching, learning, reading, and creative writing skills in English. Flash fiction is commonly defined as a story of extreme brevity, as was pointed out by Dr. Konda. It must contain all the components, including the structure of beginning, middle, and end of a story, but in a compressed and economical fashion. The term flash fiction was actually coined by James Thomas and Robert Schaper in 1992 to designate stories up to 750 words. However, in the course of time, due to frequent refiguration and mutation of the genre, its word count now ranges from 50 words and sometimes even much less than this to 1,000 words. One of the most prominent features of contemporary flash fiction in generic terms is its hybridism. Flash fiction can be considered a hybrid literary genre as it mixes poetic condensation with the fictional narrative language of the novel. According to Gumaras, the habitism of flash fiction lies in its drawing upon journalistic writing style, the elements of poetry, the novel, and the short story for its creation. Like poetry, flash is characterized by compression and elliptical leaps of language. Like fiction, flash usually deals with at least one character and involves the transformation, no matter how little, of that character and or the reader. It is in fact this very hybridism, the bricolage and the pastiche from postmodernism that characterize the contemporary art of flash fiction. Until Thomas recognized it as a separate genre, Flash fiction, which is also labeled as the short, short story, microfiction, sudden fiction, milk fiction, drabble, bite, nano fiction, furious fiction, fast fiction, and quick fiction. Some uh, scholar has given at least uh, almost 22 names. As he has given a list of 22 names, alternative names of flash fiction. I'm, I'm, I'm not giving all the names here. Uh, especially during the, it was treated, you know, flash fiction was treated, especially during the 1990s, merely as a subcategory or sub subcategory of the short story. It was almost around that time that short fiction had a genuine and powerful revival under the influence of writers like George Lewis Borges and Raymond Carver. Today, flash fiction is a global phenomenon. It has its own subgenres and modes of writing, including the mainstream short, short stories, tall tales, horror, suspense, science fiction, fables, parables, ghost stories, epistles, myth, romance, fairy tales, magical realism, futurism, surrealism, irrealism, and historical fiction. Though flash fiction writers usually follow some kind of traditional form, 
with an emphasis on well-built character or characters and plot, that is conflict, climax, and resolution. Many writers in, in contemporary times do not seem to be too concerned about the form. For them, the form is not so important as the message. For them, the message conveyed must be memorable. However, the only constraint they have is the number of words. It is perhaps their very freedom to, from the form that gives critics of fast fiction reason to dismiss its literary value. But these critics seem to forget that many other features of flash fiction, such as strong imagery, elliptical language, figures of speech, ambiguity, narrative technique, twists, and title can make up for the lack of form and establish the artistic effect of the story. Some critics may have stronger reasons to stigmatize flash fiction, but I would dwell upon them a little later. Before that, I would like to refer to five characteristic elements of flash fiction, including its setting, characters, conflict, resolution, and suggestion, as described and illustrated by Al Shaki and Abbasi through the following example of Harvey Stenborough's story of just 55 words. The title of the story is at confession. I'm going to read it to you. The story begins. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. How long since your last confession? Two years. What's the trouble? I have wished death on a man. You haven't acted on your wish? Not yet. Who is the man? He is cheating with my wife. The priest paled. I forgive you. I shot him through the screen. The story ends. Al Shaki and Abbasi argued that in a flash fiction, the story is completed through an active partnership between the reader and the writer. Truly speaking, flash fiction, like a riddle, challenges the reader's intellect and imagination to explore the meaning or message of the story hidden within its ambiguous narrative, clues, and suggestive implications. What the story says is important, but what it says not is more important. Thus, flash fiction invites an active involvement of the reader. The setting in the story is the place where the action takes place and where the characters act out a scene. We can learn about the setting in many ways. In Stanborough's story, we come to know the setting from the title and the dialogue between the narrator and the priest. The setting here is the confession box in a church. The story opens in the middle of the action, the narrator making a confession to the priest who is inside the confession box. Characters. Characters are the players in the story. They may not always be humans or animals. Even inanimate objects may act as characters. It is easy to see that the story here, the example, involves three characters. The narrator, the priest, and the narrator's wife. The role of the characters is crucial here in advancing the plot. It is the conduct of the culpable priest and the narrator's infidel wife that impels the narrator to effect his revenge in a dramatic and unexpected way. The climax comes as a surprise twist at the end of the story, 
when the narrator shoots the priest through the screen. Conflict in a story produces tension, which, as Al Shaki and Abbasi point out, can be enacted through a narrative reversal or between two dissimilar characters or even two different worldviews. Conflict engages the reader's attention and paves the way for resolution. In Stainborough's story, there are multiple conflicts. The infidelity of the narrator's wife causes the first conflict, which leads to the second conflict experienced by the narrator. He desires, the narrator, desires death of a man, but does not act on it. The third conflict is that of the priest, which manifests itself in the paling of his face when the narrator indirectly alludes to his culpability. Conflicts leads to resolution. Resolution is, in fact, the natural conclusion of the conflict. However, it must appear plausible and consistent with the progression of actions and story. It may be surprising or difficult to guess, and sometimes it remains ambiguous even after reading the ending words in flash fiction. It is this very uncertainty and unpredictability that makes flex fiction a source of creative pleasure. Ferguson observes that unlike the novel, in flash fiction, the finishing words of the short fiction take the reader, the, take, the, take the reader in the story and are memorable. In the example, of Stanborough's story, the resolution manifested in shooting a guilty priest is intense, dramatic, and surprising. What is implied in the beginning is that the narrator has come to confess his sins, but the ending turns out to be shockingly different. And this is this is the very characteristic of the flash fiction story. Suggestion is meant to indirectly convey the story's substance to the reader. Flash fiction allows the reader to draw inferences from textual clues and implications. For example, in the story, the priest's culpability is subtly suggested through his change in color. Now, let me illustrate these characteristics of flash fiction through another story entitled Worry. And this is one of my own hundred word stories published in Friday Flash Fiction. The title of this story, as I said, is Worry. The story begins. This is a hundred word story. When is, when is it going to happen? tomorrow morning at 5.30. Do you have fears? Fears? What fears? But I'm worried. Worried? About what? I don't know. Um, but please let me concentrate. Is it time to concentrate? You have just a few hours left. Are you not prepared for it? Why? I am fully prepared for it. I knew the moment would come soon. But I am worried. Worried about the last moment? Yes. Then this is your fear of scaffold. Well, you can say so, but I'm worried. Nothing must go wrong. I had to hang a brutal rapist tomorrow. The story ends. In this story, there are two expressions, fear of scaffold and hang, which imply the setting. It is the jail where the convicts with death penalty are hanged. 
the story involves three characters the hangman his colleague or companion and the rapist it is through the dialogue between the hangman and his companion that we learn about the conflicts and characterization in the story the hangman is both beautiful and emotionally sensitive apart from his sense of duty as reflected through his words and prepared for it it is also perhaps his moral urge and personal indignation as a social being against a rapist that he wants to make no mistake in carrying out his task this perhaps is the very cause of his conflict his anxiety and his worry the conflict lies in the tension between his, between his anxiety to see the rapist dead and the fear of any unforeseen error at the time of execution his only worry is that nothing must go wrong in contrast the hangman's companion seems too simple to guess the cause of his friend's worry his conflict the companion's conflict lies in his anxiety to understand why his friend is why his friend is so upset however his simple questions and guesses do not help him much the resolution in the story comes as a surprise ending when the hangman himself speaks about the reason for his worry to his companion nothing must go wrong he says i have to hang a brutal rapist tomorrow it implies that there is something more than his professional duty that makes him worried it is his moral duty to carry out his task unfailingly the message suggested to the hangman's worry is that a rapist has no right to live in a human society the hangman's repugnance towards a rapist is suggested through his use of words a brutal rapist he uses the words brutal rapist instead of a prisoner or a criminal what is more broadly implied here is that if a hideous crime like rape can stir even an executioner whose job has no place for emotions why shouldn't it move our legislators our lawmakers and our law enforcing people now let's take yet another example don towney's flash fiction entitled big hearted oak i am uh, don towney is is an american novelist and flash fiction writer and he is one of my most favorite friends and and flash fiction writers the story begins the oak tree was big in every way not just in nature it was big hearted so much so that it dropped its accounts not just out of necessity but out of love when its seedlings emerged the great tree was filled with joy it watched in awe as they grew it protected them it even shared nourishment from its roots as its offspring dropped cones of their own the tree grew old and weak one day it fell it fell softly to the earth there it lay through the seasons giving sustenance to new accounts its love and life never ending the story ends this is again a 100 word story now this is a that what story which unlike the preceding examples does not follow the traditional form of conflict leading to resolution yet it has a plot and characters it has poetic condensation and fictional narrative along with figurative language and implications the place where the oak tree stands is the setting the plot is too simple a fully grown oak tree nourishes and protects its offspring that is siblings 
When offspring are grown up, the oak withers and dies in the natural process. And even after its death, it continues to nourish its offspring in the form of manure. However, a deeper meaning is unfolded when the story is read on a symbolic level. The oak tree as a character in the story is a great example of personification. It is through the oak tree that the image of a loving, nourishing and protective father is beautifully drawn. The natural process in which an oak tree produces a cones suggests by implication the biological process by which one becomes a father. But a loving and caring father, like a big-hearted oak, is not merely a biological being. He's all, he is an emotional and social being as well. Even after death, he continues to inspire his children to the example of his virtuous and love-loaded life. The last phrase, its love and life never ending is a bit surprising because of its being paradoxical in the context of human life. You know, human, a human being dies, he cannot live forever. But here the story writer says that he's, he's, he lives forever, the father lives forever. By implication, the love and life of a father does not end even after his death. He lives through his children's memory. The message implied here is memorable. And this is one of the characteristics of race fiction. The message has to be memorable. As father, one should not, one should be loving in care. He should not misuse his age and position to domineer. In this story, as we can see, the message and not the form is important. Now I come back to critics of flash fiction who try to stigmatize short works for lack of adequate space and possibility for character delineation, emotional resonance, and empathetic identification. These critics seem to be inspired by Postulates like that of Aristotle, that beauty is a matter of size and order, and therefore impossible in a very minute creature. Or reservations like that of Edgar Allan Poe about the potential of two brief works to move the soul of the reader or to have any effect at all. Or the long-held misconception that length is synonymous with profundity. However, these critics seem to overstress the limitations of flash fiction while ignoring its possibilities. According to Botha, flash fiction, by operating on a minimal scale, tends to gather maximal intensity, which in turn enables the reader to see fast but dwell long. In consonance with Botha, Drake argues the desired effect of a successful microfiction, that is, flash fiction, is inversely proportional to its length. The more, the less is the length, the more is the effect. Uh, just as you know, the more is the compression, the more the, the more is the compression, the more is the explosion. True. Flash fiction may not have that much space or scope for character delineation, emotional resonance, and empathetic identification as the novel or the short story does. But it's not totally without such possibility. Take, for example, the story at confession. What individualizes the unnamed narrator here is his choosing of a unique way of carrying out his revenge upon the priest. His conduct characterized by his inward passion for revenge and his apparent restraint creates a scope for ample emotional resonance and empathetic identification by the reader. In another story, Worry, 
the un unnamed hangman's worry individualizes him as it is more about his own motivation to terminate a social devil unfailingly than fulfilling his professional obligation for which for which he is paid his personal indignation against the rapist makes the reader's emotional resonance and empathetic identification possible today's readers are time starved not that they do not want to read literature in fact they want something that they can read anywhere any time and in any span of time flash fiction meets this meets their needs moreover since flash fiction deals with the human condition as indicated by its thematic freedom readers are more inclined to link such stories with with what they have experienced or has seen others experience flash fiction of course is not new is not that new it has existed from the times of isap and if you if you want to refer to to hindi or sanskrit the panchatantra tales uh, and the jatak tales and he thought he thought he thought these tales uh, so it is it has existed from the times of isa to that of hemingway kafka george saunders joyce carol oates and lydia davis the fact remains uh, that flash fiction as an independent genre so it's unprecedented revival during the last two decades the creative efforts of writers like james thomas robert shepherd george lewis borges raymond carver and the growth of digital technology and the new media and the stability suitability of the genre to contemporary conditions are all responsible for the popularity and proliferation of flash fiction the market of flash fiction is getting increasingly extensive a google search for flash fiction nets about 7 lakh 19000 hits in just 0.55 seconds in means almost a minute 7 lakh 19 people want you know they they go to the google to search for flash fiction duotrop lists about 4700 publications looking for flash fiction and a few of these outlets publish about 365 stories a year now look at the you know the proliferation look at the popularity of flash fiction owing to its literary value short length easy accessibility because of digital technology growing popularity minimal complexity of plot and interplay of characters